Now on to some stuff that's tricky in movie zoo. Directing camera movement. Now, it's tricky because you have to get the whole 3D space thing that goes on in movie zoo. It being a completely 3D world and you've got you can move forward and back, left and right, spin in the spot and do all sorts of stuff like that. That inevitably means that there are a lot of keys and a lot of mouse positions to learn. But what I would say is that with practice this can actually become quite an intuitive part of your animation process. And there are lots of examples on moviezoo.com of people who have cracked it and have made um, some animations with some really awesome camera moves in it. Matthew Perk's The Book uh, is one such example. You should have a look and see what you can do with just a little bit of practice. Camera movements give a certain dynamic to your animation. However, if they're overused, they can quietly become a bit like seasickly. And I would say that the best type of camera movements are small movements. So let's not imagine that the camera is strapped to a squirrel's back, for example. But if you studied any TV show or film, you'll notice that by and large the camera stays put or does simple things like moving forward, zooming in, or looking around. Um, unless you're watching a Spider-Man film, does the camera do anything other than somersaults and things like that. Anyway, let's head over to MovieZoo and we'll talk about camera movement. So, the first thing I want to do is load up a set um, which has got uh, some examples, something that we can see actually moving. Let's see. Let's load up the living room set. I'm going to use this just as a kind of context so you can see the camera actually moving. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a texture on the sky and the ground again just so you can see the. Uh, the camera is actually moving. We'll go with that one. For the sky on the ground, we'll put that one there. Okay, we're ready to go. Okay, animating cameras, moving them around. Like everything else is a two-step two process. First of all, you have to prepare camera movement, and then you have to direct camera movement. Let's go and see what the options are. Okay, a few things uh, have happened since we prepared camera movement. The first thing is that the camera's gone see-through and an enormous pink cross has appeared. That pink cross is the first thing that you need to understand. That is the pivot point, the focus point uh, for the camera. That is the point at which the camera rotates. And just like any other object in movie zoo, if you wanted to move that, you can do so. So by putting the, piv the rotation point in the centre of the rug, that means that the camera will rotate around the centre of the rug. So let's leave it right there. We've got some other options. Now to see these options, let's go view, let's show camera's window so we can see what this camera can actually see. You can adjust the roll of the camera. That's something that you can, um, you can animate. Movement speed, rotation speed and smoothness are all going to come into play when we go to direct the camera movement and I'll show you what those do. Let's head over to direct. Okay, make this smaller. Direct camera movement. Right, it has the direct camera movement box has a whole bunch of settings that you can play around with. I'm going to leave them at the default settings just now, just so I can show you what happens out the box. The good news is that as soon as you as soon as you come to control the camera, you do so in real time. It's almost like you're flying a plane. So you can see the camera sitting in front of us, and we've got to pretend that we're flying it. And we use the same controls that you use to navigate your point of view around this 3D world. All the same mouse buttons for spinning and going up and down and forward and back apply, as do the shortcut keys, W, A, S, and D, the kind of first-person shooter type controls. I'd also say that if you go to help, and this has just come off your screen, but if we go to keyboard shortcuts, um, directing camera animation you can see a full list of all the things that you can do with the cameras so let's go ahead and hit the record button and I'm just going to use movies with standard mouse controls to move me forwards and backwards two buttons together will take me up and down and the right mouse button will make me spin round now you can see that we're spinning around that pink pivot point that's in the middle of the rug. First I can go one way 
and then I can go the other. I also have keyboard options. I can control that stuff on W, A, S and D and in a slightly subtly different way the arrow keys can slide me along on the flat or rotate me round. I've got page up and page down to rotate me that way and as I recall I've got the square brackets to roll left and right. Now that's an awful lot of keys and you really do need to, to have um, some practice in that. But let me show you what you can also do. When you hit, let's just say we hit the A key to start moving us sideways, we can then adjust the movement speed on this slider. So we can slow right down or we can speed right up. And I'm controlling that by pressing the keyboard and moving this slider. Similarly, if I use the arrow keys to rotate left and right, I can adjust the speed that that happens at with the rotation speed slider. And all this happens as we do it. The smoothness thing controls how much the camera accelerates or decelerates. So if I make it very smooth, then you can see if I try and do the sideways slide, it takes a long time to get up to speed. If I make that motion have zero smoothness, then it's almost instant. And the whole time that's been recording. Let's go and look at the timeline for that camera. You can see that the camera one which is selected has all this kind of movement stuff in here and again just like anything else in MovieZoo you can adjust these blocks around until your heart's content. So straight out of the box MovieZoo does some simple stuff with camera animation and camera movement. I'm going to delete all that. I'm going to rewind back to the start and delete everything that we've recorded. Because now what I want to go and do is show you the advanced options. Camera movement. Let's go back a step. Watch what happens when I go to direct camera movement. Your viewpoint snap is immediately brought to behind the camera. That's because we like to imagine that you're flying a plane when you do this. If you don't want your viewpoint to be snapped behind the camera, then you have to change this setting right here, Director Start Location Adjustable. Now I can move my point of view to any place in the world before I come to move that camera around. Now this is already going to do funny things to our spatial awareness because um, when we hit record, we're kind of flying the plane looking at it sideways. So front and back and left and right are kind of moving us in kind of odd directions. But it's quite nice to get the effect that you like. Okay, let's stop and rewind. And let me go to the timeline again and just delete what we've recorded. Okay. Direct camera movement. I'm going to direct a start location. I've reset back to locked behind camera, so we're back behind the camera. Let's look at the next advanced option, camera rotation. Affects the director's position. That means if you hit record and you start to rotate the camera point of view, then you, the director, your position gets affected as well and you will follow the camera around, like I said, if you're sitting flying it like a plane. However, if you change that to does not affect director position, what happens now is when you hit record, the camera seems to go way off on its own. It's still affecting me a little bit, but that's because we're following the camera and not so much. See, we're not behind it, we're not flying it like a plane anymore, we're just following it around the set so that we don't lose sight of it. And back again. So with these controls and with these options and with a little bit of practice, you can do some quite cool camera moves. Let's do a really quick case study. Create a new set. We won't save this. Blank set. We're going to create a character. Skeleton. I'm going to give them eyes. Um, face, eyes, and these ones. Okay. I'm going 
going to push the skeleton back. You can see what the camera can see right now. I'm going to push the skeleton back, and probably to about there. And I'm going to walk him in a straight line. And I'm going to show you how you go about tracking the skeleton with the camera. So first of all, let's give the skeleton some movement, direct character movement. Um, let's make it easy for ourselves and ensure that he only walks, or else it's quite hard to keep up with him. Double click there, and off he goes. You can see that he's left the uh, what the camera can see. He's left the field of view of the camera, and that's the problem that we want to address. We want to make the camera follow him as he walks along. Let's get rid of that. Okay. So how do we do this? Well, we'll keep this big camera window up. But in essence, what we want to do is direct camera movement. And I'm happy with the pink cross where it is, because I'm not going to do any rotation. And all I am going to do is I'm going to try and slide this camera to the right using the D key on the keyboard. And uh, keep up with the, with the skeleton. Now the tricky bit comes by matching the skeleton's uh, speed. We've got a movement speed slider in the direct camera movement, but I've got no idea what to set that to. I have no idea how fast the skeleton is walking. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a guess. And while we're using the D key to move the camera, I'm going to adjust the movement speed as we go and try and keep the skeleton in the centre of the frame. Now I promise you, I haven't practiced this already, so it might not be so great, but this is the principle. Let's hit record, get ready on the D key and get ready here. Oh, I've overshot. Yeah, that was rubbish. I'm sure I could do it with two or three more takes. Let's try it again. Yeah, that's better. Keep them in the middle of the frame or thereabouts. Let's rewind and play that. And that, in essence, is how you do camera movement in MovieZoo.